So grade 12 in front of me, I've got a past exam paper, National Senior Certificate, and it is paper 1, November 2018 for Engineering, Graphics and Design. On uh, the right over here, we've got our instructions and information. You'll see that the question or the paper will consist of four questions and they will count a total of 200 marks. Well, what I want to do is just show you what the paper is going to look like towards the end of the year. As you can see, this is 2018, and if I show you 2017, it looks very similar, also four questions. So you can expect that 2020 will be the same. So for this lesson, I'm going to focus on question one of paper one, and I'm going to give you a few tips and show you how to answer the question. So let's uh, go look at 2018's paper one, question one questions. So this is question one. On our left hand side, we've got a site plan. And then also there at the top, we've got some dimensions that's been given over there. On, uh, the, on the center of the page, in this column over here, We've got a section where there's details and there's also two areas to answer a question. This will normally be a section that we do a freehand type of symbol drawing. And then we've got our questions here on the right. And then on the bottom right, we've got two sections to show calculations for two of our very important questions. Now, again, I want to show you similarities to a previous paper so i'm going to use 2017 question one again we've got our site plan here on the left we've got a title panel here on the bottom center here and again we've got a little area here to answer one of our questions and this will be a graphical symbol freehand that we need to draw over there and then we've got our questions here on the right and then at the bottom We've got a section to do calculations for two of our questions. So I'm back here on the 2018 paper and I want to look at our mark allocations for question one, paper Ooh. one. And you can see in past papers, this is very similar. So you're going to start off with a section where all these questions will only count one mark. But as you go towards this um, question one you'll see that the last three questions actually count the most so there's three four four which means that's a total of 11 marks out of 30 that will come from the last three questions and that's usually how it goes in uh, paper 2017 2019 it was exactly the same so i'm going to start this question with the three most important questions and I want to show you how easy it actually is to do these and get the marks for question one paper one. So starting off with the first one question 19 it says that in the space in the title panel that's answer 29 this is it draw a neat free hand and according to the sands a face brick hatching and then also a graphical symbol for a gully. So the wall has been given over here and we just need to show the hatching for face brick. So it's a little bit different than the hatching we usually do in our civil drawings. So this symbol or these information you can get out of any EGD textbook and also some of your workbooks should have it as well. So let me quickly do the hatching. You'll see that it's a single line and then it's a double line and then space and another single line then space and another double line then a larger space again for the single line and then another space for the double line and that's the hatching then done for a face brick the next question B is the graphical symbol of a gully and please remember that this is freehand so this will be a square
and another square within that square. So once again, these symbols will be in your textbook. So if we look at question or paper 2017, again, there's an area and the graphical symbol over here was for a wash tub. And you'll get that symbols in a um, textbook. So it's very important that you do go and study your symbol so that you can draw it. Normally, they can ask you to draw a front view and a top view of, for example, a wash basin or a toilet. And then you also need to draw it in first angle orthographic projection. So now the second question, page 20, or so, sorry, number 20, it says, in the space below, answer 20 over here, determine the total length of the fence in meters. So I'm going to go to our fence over here in our site plan and you'll see that it's actually labeled here from A to B, B to C, from C to D, D to E, again to F and back to A. So using this information, you'll get all those lengths in this section over here, information section at the, at the top. So starting with A, B, we can take those um, dimensions and write them and add them all together. So that's what I'm going to start off. And then the question says it must be in meters. So I'm going to take all those dimensions and divide them by a thousand and get them in meters. So the first one over there will be 22,5 meters plus 9,85. So I'm taking all these dimensions. The second one there is 26, so plus 26,69 plus 6,5,0,5 plus 4,9,4,9,1,9 plus, and then it's the last one there, 7,4,0,5 so this now you can actually go and calculate you can use a calculator and you should get two four eight comma one eight meters so be careful now to finish off with that you then have to look at your fence and make sure that this fence is either complete but i can see that over between d and e this fence is actually broken by an entrance gate so you can see vehicle entrance it's a sliding gate and on this side as well another sliding gate the first sliding gate is 12 meters and the second one is 10 meters so that gives me the following i need to minus the 12 meters plus the 10 meters from our total length of our fence. This will give me 226,18 meters. So that is our answer then for our um, total length of the fence. Right, so the next question is to look at the calculation for answer 21 determine the total area of the proposed new auto parts building in square meters round off the answer to three decimal places so here at the bottom of our page is our proposed auto parts dealership there's no dimensions there so all dimensions have been given here at the bottom so i'm just going to move my page up so that we can focus on this area over here mm -hmm. so to work out the area it's normally our calculation will be our length 
okay, times our width. And then I'm going to use the dimensions over here. So I'm going to start off with the first one, which is 24100. So let's do this. 24100. And I'm going to times that by 7200. 7200. That will give me the area for that section of this building. So for the next section, I'm going to have to work out this area over here. Now to do that, I'm going to take the total length over here. I'll just get my calculator. And that's 18300 minus the 727200 equals. So... Let me just do that. One 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 double zero times seven two double zero. So that's the second one. So let's do that. One 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 double zero times it by seven two double zero. That leaves me with this forty five degree line and half a square. So this length over here will also be one 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 double zero and because this is 45 degrees it means that that length over there will also be one 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 double zero so i'm going to make this a complete square and then i'm going to times this length with that width so that will be my third one 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 double zero times one 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 double zero so and in order to just get half the square i'm going to divide that by two so let's start here with our dimensions here so it's two four one two four one double zero plus Seven two double zero Nope. So I'm just gonna equal that so that will give me let me just so it's two two four one double zero times seven two double zero equals so that will give me one seven three comma five two and then the next one is one 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 double zero not plus times seven two double zero seven nine seven nine comma nine two and then the next one will be one 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 double zero times one 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 double zero equals that divided then by two to split it in half and that will give me six one comma six zero five then i'm just going to take that so i'm going to start there with the six one comma six zero five plus seven nine comma nine two plus one seven three comma five two equals three one five comma zero five square meters and that then is the two calculations for our total length and then for our area of the building so this is what the most important questions of 
question one for paper one will look like it's calculations and a freehand drawings and this will give you almost half the marks for the question now if we look at again to paper 2017 you'll see exactly the same thing the last three questions there was parameter and this was total area that needed to be calculated and then the freehand drawing so it's very very similar for all papers so let's start from question one now and i'm going to go through a few of these questions and i'm just going to show you how quick and how easy it is to find the answers so what is the title of the drawing and that is a site plan okay what on what date was the drawing prepared so you'll look at when was it drawn it was drawn there by mp and it was 2018 on the fourth month the fifth day then what scale scale is one to 500 given here in our um, title section then um, let's quickly look what is the name of the proposed new street and here in the far left proposed new street ferox street so it's all information that's actually given over here then uh, how many existing buildings are there on stand 2389 so we are on two um sorry 3289 and i see there's one there two and then this is an existing building so it's three this is an existing ramp but it's not a it's not the same as a building so there's only three the next one how many parking bays are shown so we're going to look here there's one two three four five six seven and eight so there will be eight what does the abbreviation or e stand for now you're going to get in this section you are going to get quite a few abbreviations it could be r e for or i e inspection i rod i um, so you are going to have to go and study these abbreviations especially when it comes to the sewerage lines as you can see r e i e inspection i m h manhole so there's quite a few abbreviations and i can ask anyone and usually in in a question one there's always one that they ask you how wide are the pavements in millimeters so it's 2.2 meters so um, that will be 2200 um, millimeters what do the two arcs at one indicate so there's one and there's the two arcs so this is the swing of the gate so the swing of the gate um, name the feature at two so this is a watt meter again you need to go and study your electric symbols all in textbooks or even in your workbook you can find it how many manholes are shown up indicated that there's one two and there's the third one what type of fencing surrounds stand three two eight nine and i saw it somewhere palisade fencing that's been given you at the bottom of the page and then um, what feature is shown on stand three two double eight so this over here can actually indicate that this is a a wall it could be a structure or it could even be an existing building then what is the number of the stand southwest of the stand again this is a familiar question they want to test your direction so if that's north this is south this will be west that will be east so straight down over here will be southwest so southwest it is our stand 3290 and then 15 why is this existing ramp shown with broken lines so broken lines usually indicate that this structure will be removed what does the arrow on the line at 3 indicate 
So I've got three over there. There's the arrow and this is sewerage. So this indicates the direction of the flow. What is the fall of the sewer line? So the fall over there is indicated here with the PVC pipes. It's 1 to 40. What color? And colors again is something that you have to go and study. So for new concrete, um, it will be green. And uh, again, they can ask you anything. What is the color of a sewage line or an existing building, etc., etc.? So you go and study those colors as well. And that brings us then to the end. Again, question 19, 20, and 21. And like I said, if you go through past papers, you'll see that there is some similarities in the question and certain things that you need to go and focus on. And hopefully you guys can work out area and perimeter and also that you know your symbols when it comes to civil. So I hope this helps and I'm going to give you guys a few uh, question ones to go and practice with.